And we are live. Good evening, everyone. Inflation continues to rise while gold sets new all-time highs, as well as Bitcoin and many of our favorite cryptocurrencies. And for those of you who have been following me now for the past six to seven years, nothing I'm saying to you should be surprising. Nothing I'm saying to you should be new or news because I've been accurately predicting these things would happen because we live in a debt-based fractional reserve lending and borrowing banking and monetary system. And the only way that the economy can grow is through debt and inflation. And what's ironic now is that the Fed is going to have to make a difficult decision, which is why if you go back to maybe about three months ago, I said to you, I don't see how we can have eight rate cuts this year because inflation has not disappeared and um, it has not gone down enough. So we have interest rates, the Fed funds rate at five and a quarter to five and a half percent. And the economy is already starting to get a little tight in regards to the mainstream consumer. But inflation's not really budging. It's easy to get inflation down from 9% to 6 It's extremely hard to get inflation down from 4 to 2%. And that's if you believe the government's data. Because I truly believe inflation's much higher than 3.5%. But here's the dilemma. If the, Fed's, if the Fed leaves rates higher... For longer, then they run the risk of pushing the economy into a recession. And now remember, if we go into a recession and asset prices start to come down, that's less tax revenue coming into the government's pockets. Now, on the other end, if the Fed starts to cut rates, well, then we're going to have to have more inflation. We'll be right back here at 9% inflation six months to a year from now. So the Fed is in a position of they damned if they do, and they're damned if they don't. But that's not really the big problem. There is a bigger problem. And you know what the bigger problem is? The actual debt and deficit, the government's ability to borrow. Why is that? We are adding $1 trillion of debt every 100 days. I really want you to take a second to think about that because we throw around a trillion dollars like, oh, it's just a trillion dollars. We are adding one trillion dollars every 100 days. Now, why is this significant? Because if we are borrowing at a record rate and interest rates are at 5%, that means that it costs more money for the government to borrow money. And we are getting to a point where if we continue to keep borrowing at the rate that we're doing and interest rates continues to remain elevated, we're going to get to a point where the interest on the debt alone is the largest government expense than any other expense, which is why many smart institutional investors, and many of you who are my followers, you know that the government most likely is going to pressure the Fed to cut rates and just deal with the inflation. Why? Because it's easier to kick the can down the road and run with inflation than it is for governments to cut back and do austerity measures. It's just the reality. So this is why gold is starting to perform really, really well. And silver is starting to catch up, but silver is definitely behind. And why our cryptocurrencies are starting to perform well. Why? Because smart money realizes that we have a problem here. In all great empires, they end up crashing and burning the same way. Too much debt, too much corruption, too many wars, social unrest, debauchery, right? 
all great empires, they always go and crash and burn the same way. It happened to the Ottomans, right? <laughs> Literally, it goes on. It happened to the Romans. You can name any great empire. It's always debt. It's always inflation. It's always corruption. And then it's war. Now, it's not just that the United States has a tremendous amount of debt, but the entire world has a tremendous amount of debt. So it's not just that the dollar is losing purchasing power, but if you look at all fiat currencies, there aren't any good fiat currencies out here that you should want to hold. And this is why the rest of the world's waking up to the fact that we're going to have to inflate our way out of this quote unquote problem. And eventually it leads to hyperinflation or we have a great depression, which I don't believe that the Fed is going to take us on, uh, take us down that road. I saw a donation come in, Greg P., uh, which is one of my students. Peace, brother. Peace, Eli. Excited to hear the presentation. Thanks for taking the time out of your schedule. Appreciate you. Appreciate you as well, brother. So as we get ready to um, kind of dive into this information, because again, a lot of this stuff is repetitive. I've been doing this for like six, seven years now. I've been predicting this stuff and it's happening. Uh, please do me a favor and like this video. Share this video, subscribe, make sure that you uh, hit the notification bell and you set it to all. Because although many of you have heard this before, there are so many other people out here that don't know about this information that needs this information so that they can properly make the right decisions to prepare for what's to come. Um, now, when you make content like this, where you are challenging the status quo, YouTube does not like to promote this information. They do not like to push this into the algorithm. So you may not be notified when I go live. Here's what you need to do. There is a telephone number in the description below. You need to text the word YouTube to that number so you can be added to my text message list and I will message you when I'm getting ready to go live. Also, you can follow me on Instagram I create content much more frequently on Instagram than YouTube. You guys come to me all the time, man, where you been at? I'm here every day. I'm on Instagram. So if you like my content and you have an Instagram page, there's a link to follow me on Instagram where every day I'm posting what I'm doing, what I'm involved in, and I go live much more frequently there and I post content much more frequently over there. Now, my page is verified meaning I have a blue check. So if you follow me on IG, I would never DM you asking you to give me money. I would not ask you about your trading. I'm too busy to be just randomly DMing anyone, okay? So please be mindful that most likely if someone's messaging you and they don't have the blue check mark, it is a scam. If you are interested in investing with me and doing business with me, that same number in the description below, you are going to text the word invest to. So if you want to get on the YouTube list where you get messaged when I go live, you text YouTube. If you want to learn about my investment opportunities, you text the word invest. When you're, you're talking directly to me, people, please do not send money to anyone without speaking to me face to face via Zoom. Do not just randomly send money to anyone pretending to be me. Everyone will tell you if they do business with me, we get on Zoom. There's a contract. Okay, you know who you're talking to and dealing with. And last but not least, I am the founder of My Tech Academy, where we cover all things personal finance, Web3, trading, etc. We currently have a free three-day trial. You can come and test out My Tech Academy and see what we have to offer for free. Yes, you see prices on the screen. You don't have to pay those prices. You can come test out what we have to offer for free for three days. If you like it, you can then upgrade to the different products and services that we have. And I am not the only instructor inside of My Tech Academy. There are other instructors as well who have more expertise. We have courses on crypto, on blockchain development, on web development. We have a trading room where we trade live each and every day with my students. We have a business credit course where we teach you how to build out your business credit. 
and you can even work directly with me. Well, I will show you step-by-step. We'll be on calls just like this one-on-one, and I will walk you through how you can build up your business credit, start your business, and obtain anywhere from fifty dollars to $100,000 in business funding. No, this is not a sales pitch because, again, you can come test out my Tech Academy for free. Long as you cancel in three days, you will not be charged. With that being said, thank you, Kenny, for the donation. If you guys can hear me and see me clearly, we can get started. <clears throat> Waiting for a couple of ones, and then we will get started. So, seems to be a little delay. Stream settings. Okay, can some guy, somebody type one in the chat and see if the chat's working so we can get started? Can you guys hear me clearly? One. There we go. One, 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 one. Great. So here we go. It says consumer prices rose 3.5% from a year ago in March, more than expected. The consumer price index, a key inflation gauge, rose 3.5% in March. Uh, higher than expectations. The consumer price index accelerated at a faster rate. The CPI, a broad measure of goods and services costs across the economy, rose 0.4% for the month, putting the 12-month inflation rate at 3.5% or 0.3 percentage point higher than in February, the Labor Department's Bureau of Labor Statistics reported. Wednesday, economists surveyed by Dow Jones have been looking for a 0.3% gain and a 3.4% year over year level, excluding volatile food and energy components. I want you to think about that. I love how they like to exclude food and energy when I've been saying this to you guys for the longest. Inflation has never dropped. <laughs> if you go to the grocery store, I go to Whole Foods all the time, right? To get about three to four pounds of beef is $87. I want you to think about that for a second. $87 for four pounds of meat. You have to think about that. Again, financially, I'm doing okay for myself. So I can afford that. But imagine a family of four or five. A working class family. So they want to exclude food and energy. <laughs> Are you serious? Like, you, you know, there, there's so many different components. that, And this is the games that they try to play. When you factor in housing, when you factor in energy, and when you factor in food, these are three things that you have to have. You need energy to travel back and forth to work. You need energy to heat your home. Or cool your home. You need energy to cook your food. And you need food to live. And you need shelter. Those are three, three of the most essential things you need. So if you actually measure the most essential things that humans need. Then that will tell you all you need to know. That inflation has never dropped. So it says excluding volatile food and energy components. The core CPI also accelerated 0.4% on a monthly basis while rising 3.8% from a year ago compared with respective estimates of 0.3 and 3.7%. Now, this right here is a little chart that's trying to, trying to break it down for you. And again, I believe from the beginning that we never really dropped from up here. It has all items. They're, they're trying to play this game with you, less food and energy. Listen, these are the games that the government will play with data. Now, Stocks slumped after the report while treasury yields spiked higher. Now, when we come over here, as I was saying to you earlier in the opening monologue that I went on, this is important because, yes, inflation is a problem and the Fed's going to have to make a decision because if they keep rates higher for longer, Wall Street is addicted to cheap money. They're going to sell off the stock market which then is going to tip us into a recession. And I believe, like I said before, we already had a recession last year, but they wanted to try to change the definition of what a recession is, and that's by dynamics for you. And I'm not here to make the whole right-left argument because it's just two birds, right? It's just two wings of the same bird flying towards the same destination. And that's, at the end of the day, a currency crisis in this country. So now, if the Fed keeps rates higher... We're going to have a recession and the stock market is going to sell off. 
And then on the other end, if the Fed decides to cut rates, we'll be right back at 8 to 9% inflation. And I believe that we're already there. So they have a decision to make. But see, this is where the problem comes. And it's our national debt. Because see, if you actually come here and you look at the debt clock and you come here, the actual, give me one second, the debt clock. All right, boom. If you come over here and look at our debt clock, right? Every second, <laughs> right? Of every minute, right? Of every hour, <laughs> of every day, we are accumulating more and more and more and more debt. Look at this clock. This is the debt clock. And this is just our national debt. It doesn't count, right? The unfunded liabilities that we have right down here, right? <laughs> These numbers are astronomical. But see, we're adding a trillion dollars every hundred days. And I've been saying this to you. The longer that the Fed keeps rates higher, it becomes more expensive for the government to go into the market and borrow. Because that means the borrowing costs are higher. So now we're getting to a point where as the debt continues to keep growing at an exponential rate, the interest on the debt alone is going to be the, one of the largest expenses that the government has. Now I know, listen, I'm a coon, I'm an agent. I know you won't believe me. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to listen to a white man and let him give you the breakdown. <laughs> Cause I know you'll listen to him. <laughs> national debt, the money our federal government borrows to cover operating expenses, now stands at more than 34 trillion. U.S. national debt, the money our federal government borrows to cover operating expenses, now stands at more than 34 trillion dollars. If that's not bad enough, the high interest rates and the crushing payments on that debt are spiraling the crisis out of control. Right now, we're paying about 750 billion per year. Interest rates and the crushing payments on that debt are spiraling the crisis out of control. Right now, we're paying about $750 billion per year in interest costs, which again is approximately equal to the amount that the United States spends on national defense, if you can believe it. Professor Alexander Salter, PhD and economic analyst, says some forecasts expect the interest payments alone to double by 2033 from its current level to $1.4 trillion. The U.S. is set to spend around $870 billion in interest payments this year. That's more, <laughs> more than America spends on the Department of Defense and our national security. Salter said... <laughs> I laugh when I see these things because, again, I have been on this channel for six, seven years now predicting these things. This, again, look at this video right here when I was talking about the Fed prints $2.3 trillion while gold hits a seven-year high. So I'm just sitting here. I'm just gloating because these are things that I've been talking about now for on my other YouTube channel for over a decade. For over a decade. So when I hear people say, you just got to understand the United States, we have a powerful military. So we, we could just spend all the money. We could just go, we could just go and invade any country we want to. Yeah, I know. Until the rest of the world starts to de-dollarize, de-dollarize and move away from the dollar. And then the BRICS starts to come up and they say, you know what? We no longer want to buy commodities and dollars anymore. Instead, we want to use our local currency or a basket of currencies. That's the whole purpose of the BRICS to go out here and purchase commodities. Because, see, for so long, <laughs> it's not the military that gives the United States power. It's the fact that the United States made a deal with Saudi Arabia where they would price oil in dollars. It's something known as the petrodollar, which then would mean that other countries, right, would have to then take their local currency and convert it into U.S. dollars. And then they would use those dollars to go out and buy oil. So this is what was giving the U.S. dollar demand. Because in order for them to go out here and buy commodities, they have to have U.S. dollars. And then what they would do with the excess dollars that they would have after buying the commodities, they would go out and buy U.S. treasuries. Well, guess what? 
the rest of the world, <laughs> they're starting to stop buying our debt because they don't believe that we can pay our debt. And I've been talking about these things for years, for a very, very long time. Now, gold is absolutely taking off. If we come here and we look at the performance of gold over the past year, we can come here, not even the past year, just from the start of the year. We come here to January. This is the third. This is the first. And we kind of just draw this right here. We can look. Gold has been on an absolute tear. Gold is up about 14, uh, about 15% so for the start of the year. And that's phenomenal, right? Absolutely phenomenal. You know me, I own a ton of gold. But if gold's going to do well, what else do you think is going to do well? Bitcoin's going to do well. And if we look at the performance of Bitcoin, right? Right. So give me one second. If we come over here and we look at Bitcoin and we look at Bitcoin's performance over the year and we come here and we simply go and look from the beginning, we can see that Bitcoin has performed. <laughs> Bitcoin is up 66% or 70% depending on uh, where exactly are you looking and where you measure from? So about 66 to 70%, right? Bitcoin's always going to outperform gold. Why is that? Because there's something known as a market cap. And currently right now, gold is worth $15 trillion. Whereas Bitcoin market cap is $1.3 trillion. That means that gold is 15 times larger. So you don't have to be a mathematician. You don't have to have a finance PhD or be an economist to simply say, hey, the rest of the world is waking up and they're looking to start going out here and purchasing gold. And institutional investors are also hedging themselves with digital gold. Now, if we come here, we can see that the central banks, especially China, they have been buying gold for 17 consecutive months. And you can see central banks gold consumption on a quarterly basis. And you can see back here in 2020, it was only one time, one time over the past four years, one quarter that they actually sold gold. You can't get caught up in the micro. See, this is what happens to so many people. The, you're, you're, you're looking at NVIDIA this week. You're looking at AMD this week. You're trying to do stock options this week. You're chasing uranium this week. And what starts to happen is you're getting ping-ponged all around. You have to have different portfolios and different investments for different things. You have a short-term outlook and you have a long-term outlook. The market knew that what happened with COVID in 2020 with all that money printing was going to be inflationary. And you can see central banks around the world have been accumulating gold over the past four years. Accumulating. Don't miss the forest by simply focusing on the tree. And what you also can see is that, look at this, BRICS, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, surpluses are being stored in gold at the central bank level, not U.S. treasuries. Look at this, you know, just simply look at it. You can see the blue line right here is measuring gold, the purchases and storing of gold, and you can see them selling off treasuries here. The world is waking up. The world is moving from the dollar, but it's not just institutional investors and it's not just central banks. Guess who else is starting to buy gold? People who go and shop at Costco. <laughs> Costco is selling as much as $200 million in gold bars monthly, Wells Fargo estimates. estimates. It says gold has turned into money for Costco, where yellow metal sales begun last year. Uh, have turned into a cash cow for the big box retailer. In fact, 
Sales are so brisk that analysts at Wells Fargo expect revenue may now be running at 100 to 200 million dollars a month. A rapid acceleration, a rapid acceleration since bullion bullion hit the warehouse club late in the summer of 2023. Our work suggests there has been significant interest given costs, aggressive pricing and high level of, cons- of customer trust. Edward Kelly, an equity analyst at the bank, said in a note to clients Tuesday, the accelerating frequency of Reddit posts, quick online sellouts of products and cost, basically Costco, uh, cost robust monthly e-com sales suggest a sharp uptick in momentum since the launch. If Kelly's assessment is correct, that would represent quite a move for a product that only debuted last August and generated about 100 million in sales in Costco's final first quarter that ended in late November 2023. Costco is selling one ounce bars made of nearly pure 24 karat gold. While the price is not disclosed online to non members, it is estimated that the product generally sells for about 2% above the spot price. Now, why is this important? Because when you are watching this channel, I don't just tell you, I don't just read the news to you. I forecast and say to you things that I see on the horizon. Now, if we come over here, this is right here, the gold that they're selling. And obviously, again, they don't have the actual prices on here, which is okay, but you could begin to start to see that this is the Costco site and this is the gold that they're selling and it's selling out of it at record numbers. Now, why am I saying to you that you have to be able to see the obvious before it's obvious? Because what's starting to happen now is, okay, the price of gold is moving, but the actual mining uh, companies and stocks, they're not moving that well, right? So if we come here, this is how you can spot opportunity. So we look at Newmont and we could kind of see that a lot of them, just look at this. If you actually come here and look at this chart, you can see that we haven't hit all time highs yet. Right. And this looks sort of like a inverse head and shoulders right here at the bottom, right? This looks like a body. This looks like your left shoulder and this looks like your right shoulder looking for us to start running up higher. And now let's just look at the opportunity that you have above you. Look at this, look at the opportunity. Measure it from where the price is currently at, not financial advice, not telling you to go out and buy Newmont Mining. What I'm saying to you is this is how you find opportunity because you start saying to yourself, the mining stocks have not actually started to run off. And if we get a run up here, you're talking about 120% return. So for those of you who may like to play in options, you may want to start looking at some mining companies in the gold, and more importantly, in the silver space. Because if you look at the gold to silver ratio, silver is grossly underperforming gold in regards to price. This is how you find opportunity. Now, this is some of the senior miners, but there's also something known as junior miners. And you could go look at a lot of the junior mining stocks. I used to talk to you guys about it all the time. For my students inside of my tech academy, I will definitely be sharing with you a list of some mining stocks that I'm looking at, right? So as you can see here, also, like I said before, Bitcoin is starting to pick up a lot of steam and momentum. Let's check the price of Bitcoin and see what Bitcoin's doing right now. Digital gold, uh, Bitcoin, if we go here, Bitcoin, US dollar, boom. Bitcoin right now is trading at $70,000. And look at this beautiful ascending wedge that we're making where you can start to see price building. You can start to see, right? <laughs> you can see this nice build coming there. And then you can see this nice one right here, right? And you can see as we're getting closer and closer and closer, we're getting ready to get that breakout that we're looking for. <laughs> right? You know, we're getting closer and closer and closer. And now when we understand if Bitcoin does well, right on cue, they're already talking about the Ethereum ETF. You have to be able to see the obvious before it is obvious to everyone else. And then guess what happened? 
Hong Kong is set to approve its first spot Bitcoin ETF in April. So all of the people who are telling you Bitcoin is a scam, where are those fools at now? We're at 70K. We're getting ready to break out. There's absolutely no more Bitcoin really to go around. The happening is getting ready to happen. And look, we have Hong Kong set to launch their first spot ETF. Why am I sharing this with you? Go back here. Put the pieces of the puzzle together. Yes, gold is great to own. Which asset's going to perform better? Guess what? Bitcoin's going to perform better. Here's something else better for you. Because I love to teach, right? If we come here and we look, assets, if you growth by $100 by asset class, if you put $100 into the S&P back in the 70s, it would be worth $22,000. If you put it into corporate bonds, and obviously you kept compounding it and reinvesting it, it would be worth $7,000. And gold, it would be worth $5,500. U.S. Treasuries, $2,200. Real estate, $1,500. Why is this? Because assets that have lower market caps, paper assets like stocks, will always outperform hard assets in an inflationary environment. And we've been in an inflationary environment since the 70s. It's math. So when you're looking at mining stocks, mining companies, whether it's Bitcoin mining companies or whether it's actual precious metals mining companies, that's th those companies are going to far outperform actually holding gold. And let me explain something to you. Gold is simply... A store of value. Meaning if you have wealth, you can maintain that wealth in gold. If you only have $5,000, not financial advice, but you should not be buying gold. The mining companies are going to give you a better ROI than you're going to get by simply holding the metal, holding the uh, actual hard asset. You'll get a higher ROI in the actual stock market or in the crypto market with these assets because they're going to give you a greater multiple and you can use leverage when buying those assets. Now, if you are a wealthy person, wealthy person, yes, you want to make sure that you have a higher allocation towards gold, or even silver, even real estate, because again, you're already wealthy and you're trying to maintain that. But for those of you who are trying to build wealth, you're going to build wealth much quicker in paper assets than you ever will by holding the precious metal. And that's just the reality. So I know many of you, you know, you're like, oh, I like gold better. You can like it better all you want to. The numbers are going to tell you all you need to know. Now, the reason why I said inflation since 1970, because once we got off the gold standard back in 71 with Nixon, when we suspended the gold window and then completely broke the convertibility of the dollar into gold in 73, we've been in an inflationary environment ever since. And I want to play what Nixon said back then so that we can draw the parallel and connection between then and now. Because, see, when you read the book, The Creature from Jekyll Island, and I'm going to keep repeating myself because truth is consistent— I don't need to come here and tell you anything different because the things that I'm saying to you are happening, right? All of the coins I've been talking to you about are performing well. Gold is performing well, right? So if you come here and you watch this video, let's see if I can find it right here. Boom. Let's listen to what Nixon said back then, and then let's draw the parallels between today. Indispensable element and building the new prosperity is closely related to creating new jobs and halting inflation. We must protect the position. The third indispensable element in building the new prosperity is closely related to creating new jobs and halting inflation. We must protect the position of the American dollar as a pillar of monetary stability around the world. In the past seven years, there's been an average of one international monetary crisis every year. Now, who gains from these crises? Not the working man, not the investor, not the real producers of wealth. The gainers are the international money speculators. Because they thrive on crises, they help to create them. In recent weeks, the speculators have been waging an all-out war on the American dollar. 
Let's stop right there. Because he said, you know, it's not fair that we have these crises and that speculators are making money at the expense of the working man. Well, let's look, let's really look at how has the working man benefited since the 70s, right? <laughs> this website, What the F Happened in 1971, is a really, really good site that I want to encourage many of you guys to actually, um, you know, go and to the site. Because let's look at growth and productivity right here. And look at 72. You can see that growth and productivity and hourly compensation since 1948, when we were actually tied to gold and we had some restraints in our monetary policy, right, in our government spending, you can see they were in tandem, right? And then something happened where compensation sort of started to move sideways, but productivity went up. And that would be weird. We're producing more, but the compensation is not rising and going up with our productivity. And then real GDP, real wages and trade policies in the U.S. since 1947, and look at real GDP right here in 1970. You can see GDP went up, right? All right, average real wage, but then average real wage with the uh, minus the CPI, you can see actually fizzled out. So we're producing more. GDP is growing, but real median weekly earnings of full-time workers actually just remain flat, if not lower. So we're producing more. GDP is going up, but our, our wage is going up. With all of this production, are we actually benefiting from the things that Nixon said we should benefit from, right? Income gains widely shared in early post-war decades, but not since then. Look at the 95th percentile versus the median. Then look at the 20th percentile. Most of it falls below the median. We were supposed to get all of this productivity. We got all of this productivity. And all of the gains went to the top. So what was sold to us as this was supposed to be a great thing for the working class people that we were supposed to have more stability. Do we really have stability? Because look at 1970. Look at the top 1% versus the bottom 90% of earners. Right? <laughs> look at the top 1%. This orange line. Their income is booming. Look at the bottom 90%, basically lower than we were in the 70s. So, chat, I want to ask you the question. Did we get all of the productivity gains and did our wages do better? And did we do better economically and financially after we removed ourselves from the gold standard? You tell me, chat. Was Nixon right? <laughs> you tell me, chat. I'll come back in a second and read the chat. And then now, more importantly, I want you to look at our total public debt because this is very, very important. Look what happens back here in 1970. And then now, look at the public debt continue to grow and grow and grow and grow and grow and grow. And grow. And every decade, you can start to see the curve, right? The steepness, it starts to get steeper and steeper and steeper. And now look, we're getting that hockey stick. We're getting that hockey stick look now towards the end. And remember, if you've been following me, I have been talking about this stuff for years now. I've been showing these same charts for years. Why? Because now it takes twice as much debt and spending to re-stimulate the economy. And then now inflation starts to happen because all of this money that the government is borrowing, it hits the banking system. And the bank starts to do, become a money multiplier because banks create more money in inflation than the government does. Because banks don't have to actually hold deposits. So before the reserve ratio, you had to have about 10% of, of every dollar that you had in, in deposits. But now, after, after the pandemic, it dropped to 0%. So now, when you put money in a bank, 
The bank now starts leveraging that money up times 10, times 50, times 20, times 100. Because when you go and you actually take out a loan or when you go and you go and let's say get an auto loan or a mortgage loan, that money is just magically poofed out of thin air. It just comes into existence, right? And now that money that you were then that was created to be given to you, that goes out into the economy and the money multiplier starts all over again. And this is why you have so much debt and leverage in the system. And then what starts to happen now is you need more dollars to pay down these different debts and deficits that you, uh, these different debts that you've accumulated. So as you can start to see, the national debt continues to grow and continues to grow. And now it's getting exponential in the amount of growth. And this goes back to, like I was saying to you before, that the largest expense for the government is going to actually become the interest on the debt alone. Right, so we're getting to we're we're reaching that point where we're starting to get to the point where this debt is starting to become unsustainable, and this is why I emphasize to so many of you that you because a couple of my students uh, earlier when we was in the trading room they were saying to me that um you know like they may like like it's kind of like unnerving to kind of like be living through this because this is no longer something that you're just reading in a book like you're actually watching these things unfold and happen in real time. And people are wondering, like, well, what should I be doing? What you should be doing is getting prepared. What you should be doing is understanding that history doesn't repeat itself, but it damn sure rhymes. What you should be doing is reading books like The Creature from Jekyll Island, What Government Has Done to Money by Money Rothbard, by Murray Rothbard, right? Reading The Price of Tomorrow. The same books that I've been telling you to read for years, reading the book like The Bitcoin Standard, so that you can start understanding where we where we've come from, how do we get here, where we currently are, and where we're more likely to go in the future. Because understand, very few governments are going to go the austerity uh, austerity route. Most likely, they're going to go the inflation route because it's easy to play to blame the Republicans, blame the Democrats. Oh, you gave out the tax cuts. Oh, you spent money on health care. Oh, you spent money on war. Oh, you spent money. And now you're playing every four years. I'm going to vote for someone that's going to fix the problem. When in reality, no matter who you vote for, the problem is the monetary system in itself. It is designed to be inflationary. And paper assets will always outpace inflation. Inflation rewards asset holders, and it punishes individuals who actually hold on to their dollars. If you're holding U.S. dollars, you are losing money, and that's just the reality. Now, it gets even better because now what we're starting to see is why China, Japan, and the Fed are shaking up the $26 trillion U.S. Treasury market because— Investors now, like I said to you before, are starting to get to the point where they're not, they don't want to hold U.S. Treasuries anymore. They may purchase short-term Treasuries, but they don't want to go out and buy 30-year bonds. And now with the rise of the BRICS, and now what's happening with Russia and the Ukraine, now what's happening with Iran and Israel, the world is starting to wake up. Your job is to see this and start pivoting so that you could be properly positioned for what's to come. Now, in the case of crypto, guess what happened? Because we're talking about buying treasuries. We're talking about assets. BlackRock announced the build fund on Ethereum. And they draw in $245 million in a week. So while you're sitting here and you're listening to your broke aunt, your broke uncle, and they're telling you that that crypto thing is a scam, it has no utility, no use cases. Well, BlackRock just announced the build fund on Ethereum. And they were able to attract $245 million in a week. The Ethereum-based build fund from investing giant BlackRock has raised $245 million in Ethereum tokens since its launch last week. According to data from Etherscan, 10 transactions have been entered, have entered the BlackRock USD International, oh, excuse me, Institutional Digital Liquidity Fund. Beginning with $5 million on March 20th when the build fund launched. Over the next seven days, an additional $239 million flowed into the ERC-20 base fund, including $92 million in Ando short-term U.S. government treasuries from the tokenized real-world asset platform Ando Finance. Now, how long have I been telling you that? 
crypto AI, gaming, and real world assets is going to be where the majority of the wealth and the opportunity is going to be captured in this cycle. And look, you got BlackRock. This is just a proof of concept. So now you got the Bitcoin ETF. Now they're talking about, now you got the Biddle Fund for real world assets on Ethereum. Now they're talking about an Ethereum um, ETF next. And while they're talking about that, you have the Ripple Tarts talking about, we have a stable coin. <laughs> right? <laughs> while, while Ethereum is actually attracting real capital, institutional investors, the Ripple Tarts are talking about a stable coin. <laughs> you know, the jokes, they just write themselves because I'm sitting here and I'm saying to myself, I could have sworn that Ethereum had stable coins, what, three years ago, four years ago, but yet somehow when Ripple gets the stable coins, that's when they're going to be the bankers coins, right? <laughs> now, guess who else launched? A stable coin. I spoke about this on my live the other day, right? Guess who else launched a stable coin? And they were supposed to remember Cardano launched a stable coin. And remember, Cardano's stable coin was supposed to be revolutionary. It was supposed to put Cardano on par with Ethereum. Cardano was supposed to be the Ethereum killer. Once they got Shelly, and then they got the stable coin. And I love when the ripple charts tell me, I don't know what I'm talking about. Oh, see, you, he, he, doesn't, he doesn't know what he's talking about. I mean, I've only been investing in crypto since 2012, 2013. I've only been developing and working and building applications over the past, what, six years. Right? I only sit up here and broadcast and read the same white papers and documents that you read. But somehow, I don't know what I'm talking about, yet I, I, I can cite almost everything that's happening in the crypto space. But somehow, I don't know. Well, guess how, guess what the market cap is currently for Cardano's stablecoin? Someone in the chat tell me how much is Cardano's stablecoin worth? How much liquidity is in the coin? What's the market cap? Educate me. I'll sit here, I'll wait. I'm going to show it in a second. What do you think the market cap is? Right? It's called the Jed. D J E D. Right? It's called the Jed. Yeah. Uh, Patrick said 20 million. Try a little bit lower. Try a little bit lower. Got this right? There we go. My follower was no $3 million. Right here. Look at the market cap. The 24-hour volume is $144,000. Wow. And somehow we're supposed to believe that Ripple with their stablecoin is going to absolutely dominate, right? <laughs> what would make you think that all of a sudden Ripple is going to dominate the stablecoin market? What would make you think that? What, what has Ripple actually accomplished to show you that this is happening? See, there's something key. There's something key about this article. And what I want to do is I like to teach you guys, right, so that you don't get bamboozled by the bullshitters in the Ripple community. It says, this is very, very important. It says, the Ethereum-based build fund from investing giant BlackRock has raised $245 million in Ethereum tokens since its launch last week, according to data from Etherscan. So this is not someone writing something. You can actually go on chain and verify that that $245 million flowed into the Builder Fund. It went to an address. I ask the Ripple Tards all the time, show me the on-chain activity that can validate your conclusion that banks are adopting the protocol. Because if banks are adopting the protocol, I should be able to go on to the Ripple chain, right? Go to the Explorer, and I should be able to see the activity happening on-chain. 
I want you to understand that three years later, four years later, you're getting excited about a fucking stable coin. <laughs> Could you imagine getting excited about having a stable coin? A stable, because from the looks of it, I would think, right, just from the looks of it, the Ripple coin itself is a stable coin because it doesn't move. If I came here and I looked at the Ripple coin, I would think at 61 cents that itself is a stable coin. I mean, the jokes, they just write themselves. Right? I would think that XRP itself was the stable coin. You know, because if we look at it over the past, if you look at it all this time, it's just been moving sideways. Now, am I telling you not to buy Ripple? No, you could buy Ripple, right? You could very well go and buy Ripple, right? And if you look over the past year, Ripple is up 19%. Way to go. You made 19% on your money. If you held over a year, great. What I'm trying to get you to understand and see, this is what people won't show you, is if you just look at some of these coins, right? Just look at some of these new coins, right? So let's just look at some of the coins that I own. OPSEC, right? Over the past year, OPSEC is up over 2,600%, 2,600%. So when your Ripple Tar is going to tell me, oh, you you don't know about crypto. You know, you, you, just, you just hating because you bought the top. Are the coins that I'm talking about, they're up over 2,000%. Projects I'm talking about are up over 2,000%. <laughs> now you're excited because you made 20% and you got a stable coin. And we're talking about artificial intelligence. We're talking about coins like GPU, right? We're talking about coins like GPU. Let's look what GPU did over the past year. 3,000%. Uh, um, 3,000%. Um, hold, hold on. Let, let's, let's look at something like Render. Because if you're in my tech academy, Bruce talked about Render when it was 30 cents and our, he, we dropped that coin. Um, Render is up 484% over the past year. What's up, Dame Dummy? Uh, we see Dame Dummies and he says, imagine getting your jaw rocked for talking reckless. Listen, Dame Dummy, you, you can't pay your child support allegedly, right? You know, you're being forced now to have to sell a percentage of your company. All right to pay off some lawsuits that you owe. I think you need to save the two dollars that you have because it's been over six years. You haven't rocked my jaw yet, right? <laughs> you know, I think you need to get to rocking a job so you could pay your child support. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, back to cooking, right? So when you're looking at a lot of this stuff, another project that I'm really, really big on, Realio. Uh, this is another project that's up. 581% over the past year, right? Now, again, am I saying to you that you're going to catch, you caught the whole 500? No. What I'm saying to you is that there are much better opportunities that have much more exciting technology, that have much better use cases, and actually are much closer to realizing those use cases than Ripple. Ripple has a $33 billion market cap. Okay, let's say it gets to 300 million, you 10 x your money. Do you understand that this coin right here's market cap is about 14 million dollars? Now, granted, we know sometimes market cap can be flawed, so some sites may have 30 million for oh, it's lower and it has a tremendous amount of room to run. Look in the AI space. Look what's happening with Render. Look what's happening with Tau. Look what's happening with Fetch. Look what's happening with uh, Ocean Protocol. There are a ton of other cryptocurrencies right now that have much, much, much better use cases that are being realized than a fucking staple coin. Than a staple coin. <laughs> right? So pe people, be mindful of the information that you're following because these things are unfolding in, in real time. These things is fluid. The, the debt is starting to accelerate. The, the other countries are starting to wake up. Gold is starting to pump. I will also say to you, pay attention to silver. Pay attention to silver. 
Because if we come over here and we look at silver's performance versus gold, that's another one that we need to look at. If we actually look at Bitcoin, right? Look at this. See, this is this is part of we had the massive up. Then we re I teach my students this all the time. Whenever you're looking to buy a pullback, you always look for it to retrace half of that initial leg up. We went up, we did a half of a pullback. And then now we're starting to get really, really tight. Really, really tight before we actually break out to the upside. That's what I believe is going to happen. Even if we drop down temporarily, it's, it's just a supply and demand issue. But if we look at silver, we come here and we look at silver SLV. Um, and um, boom, 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 boom. I think it's SIL for futures, right? So let's look at the actual futures price of silver. Boom, 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 boom. All right. Um, I think it's SIL or SSI for Comex. Boom, boom. There we go. So right here, let's look at the actual spot price. We're at what twenty eight dollars. Um, let's go here. Let's look at the monthly. Boom, boom, boom. This chart looks nasty. Nasty. Dun, 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 dun. All right. So you can see silver. We we have it's been a while since we've got. I remember this back in when we got up to about fifty dollars. Yep. I remember this back when uh this was back when I was in college. I remember this. The 2010 spike. This is when, now that I'm thinking about it, I don't know if my business partner, Eugene, my friend and my business partner, if he's in here. But Eugene, I think that this is when we lost the five thousand dollars playing with the um, the silver options. I remember this is back when we was at LIU, but um, we was banking on silver going to a hundred dollars. We was in this spike. We were up like I think we was up at one time like three grand or four grand in the options, and then it just rolled over on us. But as you can see, uh, silver has not really started to run like gold has run. And this is why I say to you, remember, that's the whole purpose of being here. We talk about opportunity. Silver is an opportunity, right? Precious metal mining stocks are opportunity because they because gold's starting to take off. The, the reasons for buying gold are not going to go away. We can see that there's a huge amount of demand and not enough supply. And it's the same thing that's happening with Bitcoin. So you should be looking at looking at silver, right? And also purchasing um, some, uh, what's the name? Uh, precious metal stocks. A silver company I used to invest in back in the day was like First Majestic, I believe it was called. I want to see if they're still around. It's been a while since I've looked at them. I, I used to buy silver from them. Uh, First um, Majestic. Oh, look, AG, they still around? Wow, I used to I used to buy silver from this company back in like 2000, probably like 2007. I was buying uh silver from them. No, no, not 2007, like 2009. Let's look and see if the website's still around. It's been a while since I've actually um wow, um first wow. First majestic silver. Boom. Wow. Yo, this is crazy. This is crazy. Wow. Going down memory lane. There's no substitute for silver. Wow. So th these are the stats right here. The number of people that employ, percentage of AG revenue, strong position. So I'm um, not saying buy the stock. I'm not saying to buy the stock. What I'm saying to you is that this was a stock that I used. Uh, I, I used. I mean, a company I used to uh, buy uh, silver from. And I would definitely start looking at companies like this that are in this particular space because if we see silver start to run, because look at this right now, um, this is the price of uh, First Majestic. It's only seven dollars and ninety one cents, and I believe silver's at like what, like twenty something dollars. So if silver gets back up to fifty dollars. Look, look at this. It's depressed. Got a lot of opportunity in some of these uh, stocks. See what the chat's talking about. <laughs> Uh, fetch AI just flew. Yeah, fetch AI absolutely. I believe they just did a merge, right? If I'm not mistaken, I saw something about them doing like a merge. Um, fetch AI over the past uh month is up over the past year is up like 631 percent at a monster run. Um, look up 
uh, HYMC. What exactly is HYMC? Is that a cryptocurrency or is that a stock? Let's look um, HYMC. Um, yeah, I don't see anything like that. So maybe let's go over here, look at trading view, see what you're talking about. They're not getting you. Let's see. Let's move this over here so we can kind of have a sense towards the end. Um, uh, H H Y M C. Um, all cross mining. Oh my God, this thing got smoked. Woo! Oh shit! Yo, I, I I hope you didn't buy this thing back here. This thing right here is getting smoked. Jesus Christ! Let's look it up. Uh, Highcroft. Uh, hi. Uh, hi, Croft Mining Corporation. So let's look and see what they got going on here. This thing got smoked. Wow. Jesus Christ. This thing got smoked. Stop. Whoa. All right. Let's look and see how the website looks. Let's go do some. We we'll definitely look into this. It's traded on the NASDAQ right now. 369,000 shares traded. Mm -mm -mm -mm. This thing got smoked. <laughs> this is something I'll put on my watch list. Something I'll do some research on. I'll definitely keep this on uh, my watch list for sure. I'll definitely do some research on this. Look at the CEO. Look at the revenue. Look at their projections. Look at their mining operations. Um, you just brought brought it last week. Gold and silver mining. I'll tell you what, man. If you shorted this thing, you definitely made a tremendous amount of money. I'll tell you that much. You definitely could have made some serious money. Right? So... Let's go here. Let's look at the market cap. A uh, market. Let's go here. Market cap of um HYMC. HYMC. Uh, wow. Look at the market cap. The market cap is tiny. Wow. I'll tell you what. This to me is like one of those like penny stocks. Like a pink sheet stock. It's on the NASDAQ. But to me, this reminds me of one of those. Easily manipulated, easily manipulated um, stocks that can really run. So to me, this is something that like, again, this goes back to not financial advice, but this to me is like a meme coin where you put a thousand bucks in it, market cap $71 million. It can run to, you know, five, $10 billion market cap and you can make an insane amount of money on your returns on your money. But remember, it all when when this is why it's called personal finance. If you are someone and you don't have a lot of money, then you kind of have to play in the meme coin space or the penny stock space or the low market cap space. But if you're someone that you have money, you don't really gotta touch this type of stuff, right? And I'm talking about if you have something like you have fifty thousand, a hundred thousand dollars, you don't really need to touch this stuff. Or if you do, you touch this stuff with small amounts of money. Like this is like a lottery ticket. This is not something that looks like a sound investment that I would put money into. Um, for your soul says Arrow Finance. Uh, let's see what you got. So Arrow Finance. All right. Uh, let's look at the website. That's the first thing I want to do when I'm looking at a project. Look at their website. All right, the Century Trading and Liquidity Marketplace on base. I've actually been hearing a lot about Arrow, actually. Um, so website looks good. Doesn't look like a scam website. Um, total value locked, $674 million. So that means that some people are locking up liquidity in there. That's good to see. <clears throat> Monthly trading, $1.2 billion. So the TVL is $674 million. And the market cap is... Um, 
says three hundred million dollars. So that's good. That's not bad. Uh, that you got three hundred million dollars in there. So it's not bad at all. And you got more. The market cap's that, and you, they're saying the TVL is six hundred and seventy-four million dollars. It's called DeFi Llama, and see what they have here. Uh, DeFi Llama. <laughs> All right, boom, 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 Mm, 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 mm. Like that for sure. Look at this token liquidity TVL. Look, you're starting to see a ramp up in this project. This is what you like to see. You like to see a steady build over time in 2024. You're seeing liquidity. You're seeing U.S. dollars flow in there. I like it. Transactions. Transactions are pumping. There's liquidity in the project. I like it. I think it's legitimate. Looks good to me so far. Um, let's see who are the founders in the project. Um, boom, 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 boom. Um, who are the founders? Do they have a docs team? All right, so articles, support, nothing about the team I see here. Um, so, Arrow 19. Uh, let's go to their Twitter. Maybe we can see something there. Um, Twitter. So, always when you're looking at a project, guys, go and see how much liquidity is in the project because that'll let you know exactly what's going on. Right? want to always make sure that there's liquidity in a project. Cause that means that other big money is moving in there. And I'm pretty sure that they probably have like some staking, um, like, uh, like APY going on right now, like, uh, like some type of a bonus for like yield farming. Um, that's the website that we just left. Um, swap liquidity finance, hundred percent. So let me look and see if the team, um, What's it called? Arrow Drone Finance Team. Uh, Arrow Drone Finance uh, Team. Boom, boom, token Insight. All right. <clears throat> I don't see nothing about the team. So, Docs is a next gen tokenomics contracts. So, Security. You can see that they had a security audit, so that's good. Shows us some legitimacy. You can see that Arrow Down Finance inherits the contract architecture for security maintenance from Velodrome V2. So you can see this is the security audit emergency council. These are all of the different contracts that they had. So that's good. They had a security audit. Still don't know who the team is or who the creators of the project are. Is, is that, that to me alone would make me draw some skepticism about the project. But so far, everything checks out to me. They have liquidity. I don't know what the project is doing. I would obviously look into um, how are they paying out the staking rewards because I'm pretty sure the reason why you're seeing all of these dollars flow into here is that they have to have some probably crazy APY that they're paying out right now, right? So, um, <clears throat> yeah, look at this. <laughs> See, <laughs> no, Dude, like I swear, these things they just write themselves. So you can see right here that basically they're trying to basically entice liquidity. They're paying out 64% APY on this particular pool right here. This is like a yield farming play. So 
So let's see. Are they actual like a aggregator? Let's read it here. Um, yeah, this reminds me of a lot of those yield farming platforms that they had during the last bull market where you got to kind of be like a sniper and be able to jump in front of a lot of this liquidity. Like, look at what they're paying out right here for Arrow USDC. So basically, what I'm seeing here is that these are a lot of people who are trying to front run a lot of probably the liquidity rewards. This just is me guessing. I haven't really looked that deep into the project yet. So, um, but it says a central trading place and liquidity marketplace. This runs are like Curve Finance, like an aggregator. It's Arrow Diamonds of Design to be a next generation automated market maker at AAM designed to serve as basis central liquidity hub, combining a powerful liquidity incentive engine. So when they talk about incentive engine, basically they're going to pay you really, really high um, yields to basically get your liquidity over there. So you could do a lot of liquidity farming and mining. The problem with this type of stuff is that they pump and then they dump. Because people, when they get the rewards, the first thing they do, they don't hold the coins. They start to sell the coins. So the question is going to be, will there be enough supply, I mean, enough demand to soak up all of that supply that's coming onto the market? So to me, like, this doesn't look like anything different than what we see happen on the Phantom ecosystem. It looks like more of the same. Now, you have anti-dilution rebase for voters. I'll look into the project. It looks interesting. But this looks like just liquidity providing it or being an automated market maker. No no different than like Curve and many of these other uh, staking platforms that we saw we came across, especially like Magic Internet Money. What was some of the Olympus Dow was another one that they had that was really big last bull run. And then we saw what happened to many of those projects. So I don't see how this is any different. Um yeah, Earl, Eddie, but see, you got to understand, like, the 64% is most likely because of, like, are they, like, in permanent loss, where most likely you're going to probably end up having to hold the other token. So, because remember, whenever you're swapping on an automated market maker, you're taking the other side. So, let's say that right now I'm providing liquidity. I'm on Uniswap, and I have a poll, I, I have a pool where... There's a uh, USDC on one side and Ethereum on the other side. And if you want right now to buy Ethereum, you're going to put USD on the other side, right? So now if the price of Ethereum starts to take off and I'm holding a bunch of dollars, I would have been better off just simply holding the ETH as opposed to getting paid in the dollars because you get a percentage on the, the swap fee, but the actual asset that you're giving up, because remember, you have to provide liquidity for both sides. That's the whole purpose of being an automated market maker. So when you pull the ETH off and you take the ETH and you give me a USDC, a USDC dollar is only worth a dollar. But if the price of ETH doubles, I lost money. Now, if there's two tokens where one goes up in value and the other one goes down in value and people keep giving you that token, does that 64% really offset? The impermanent loss of basically holding a, to a token that may not have enough liquidity in it. So a lot of times when you see these high yields, you have to ask yourself, you know, is it worth it in regards to holding those coins that I'm going to get rewarded that 64% in? So a lot of that stuff, you know, um, it's not really worth it. Like I got burned bad in the phantom ecosystem uh, playing that, you know, that whole um, liquidity mining stuff like that because impermanent loss is real where basically the coin that you're getting paid in is dropping in value compared to the other coin that you was providing liquidity on the other side. Absolutely, hot potato, 100%. 100%. Uh, salute, Eli. Can you review the project? Uh, prop, USDT, prop. I don't, I'm assuming you're saying props. So if it's property, if it's uh, property, I'm in that project. That's a good project. I, I told people about that in my group. Um, prop. You mean proppy or props? Great full of buses. Is it props or proppy? I think Cosmos is going to do really, really well in this uh, bull run. Is it is it props? Is it props or proppy? Because I'm in I'm in um, proppy. Proppy's a solid project. 
props. Well, there's two props here. So which one? Prop base or props token? So the arrow, the arrow dome finance project looks like more like a yield farming play to me. That's not something that I would want to hold long term. It's a finance project. Yeah, but like what, what, which logo? Is it this one in black or this one in blue? Like I would never, I'm going to be honest with you. Most of those like yield aggregators and automated market makers indexes and stuff like that. I don't really like to hold them. You get smoked in them. Prop base. Uh, boom. Let's take a see. Right in the right off the back. Total supply. So many. 1.2 billion tokens. A lot of tokens currently circulating. Less than half the supply. A 28%. So kind of inflationary. Uh, look, moving well. Congratulations. Project's doing really, really well over the past year. Look at that. Doing really, really well. When did you get into the project? I uh, wouldn't get into the project. It looks it looks good. Good mo good momentum. White paper. And guys, this is just me briefly looking at something. This is not me actually diving deep into the uh, project. Um, another staking project. Guys, I'm very, very skeptical of a lot of these staking projects with a lot of where. Where does this 8 to 12% yield come from? The first thing you need to do, same thing with Arrow Dime Finance, the same thing right now over here when you look at the liquidity. Where is the yield coming from? Where does this 64% come from? Right? That's the, the first thing I want to know. Where does the 64% come from? Because if it comes from inflation or if it comes from a token that's highly inflationary, I don't care about it, right? Right. Or if, or if I have to hold a coin that's illiquid, then it doesn't really make sense to to, to earn that 64%, right? Um, Probably where we are. Where we are. I lost it. Boom. So the first thing I want to know is where does this 8 to 12% come from? Um, Maybe you can tell me where the 8 to 12% come from. So that's what I would definitely want to know. Um, Is that, is this, is this coming from just simple inflation from the token? Is this coming from transactions? Is this coming from maybe um, rental income or in the blockchain, like r real estate that's being rented out? I would definitely want to know that. Um, so, is a team. Um, all right. Yeah. All right. So, this is their team here. I would definitely want to look into these individuals. I would say that you definitely look into see who they are. Um it says execution, high velocity growth, awesome team, building a great project. The values, join our team. Do, 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 do. The story behind our company. The prop-based founding team has had a painful experience investing in property. Why was it slow? Why was our reach of many? So when we decided to prop tech investors solve a problem, we realized the future do, 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 through transformation we're laying out. Right? So browse and open up positions at prop base. I want to kind of know what exactly they're doing, though. Um, economics. All right. IDO. And this your offering. Rewards. 35% rewards. When I see this, I go inflation. <laughs> Inflationary. So this is where the 8 to 12% is coming from. Right. Right. When I see this, I'm not saying that you can't make money with this type of stuff. What I'm saying to you is that you have to make sure that you are aware of when the whales start selling, because what happens to a lot of these people is they hunt out this liquidity. They start getting the liquidity and then they immediately start dumping the tokens. So um, just be mindful of that. That right there to me is is a lot. 35% is going to rewards. I'm assuming that. And again, this is just me looking at it from a bird's eye. I haven't looked at the white paper. I haven't really looked at the way that the token is going to operate in the ecosystem. I'm just telling you, when I see something like this, this to me right here is, you know, uh, a red flag to me with the token distribution, with rewards, um, how it's going to be paid out. Because I'm, I'm assuming, and again, this is me assuming, 
that that's basically where that six to twelve percent comes from. Um, right. There you go. Look at the one two percent of supplies allocated to the crowd based IDO lockups. The company foundation and seed allocations have a tiered um, lockup of sixty months and ensures long term success. Uh, the Aptos blockchain. Oh, I like Aptos. Aptos is a solid chain. So definitely want to dive deeper into that. But I, like I said, that to me is that's iffy. Roadmap. Boom 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 boom. They got a good roadmap. And what's the market cap? So. Oh, look at the market cap. Market cap's tiny, $71 million. So this thing can still run. It still has room to run. Just understand, as you make your money, don't, don't, don't buy the Kool-Aid. Don't be someone that starts locking up your coins that earn that 8 to 12%, and then you get burned long term. But like I said, it looks, it looks decent. They they have a I like this project better than the Arrow Finance project in regards to leash. They have like a roadmap on a page, kind of what they're trying to do. Um, you know, they have a good roadmap. You can see who their team is. Like to this to me is something that and the market cap's low. So this is definitely something that I'll put on my list. I still want to know who these people are. What are their backgrounds? How much experience do they have in developing um, you know, real estate and technology? Because if they are serial project hoppers or they're people who have some shady backgrounds, I may not want to do business with them. But this is something I'll definitely look into Um, because I'm in this project um, right here. This is what I was telling. I told my students about this project. We caught this one. Um, Where is it at? It was uh, Proppy. Proppy did really well. We caught a nice week. We caught a nice move in Proppy over the past uh, the past year is up 500% over the past month. We got up about 391%. Um, Brandon Cameron says, Eli, what are your thoughts on the crypto helium mobile? They just rolled out $20 phone plans nationwide. You know, the funny thing is I'm, I'm a dumbass Cause you know, I was in helium back about like four or five years ago. I jumped big into helium and then I sold a lot of it. So, but um, helium is one of those that's shockers. The whole internet, IOT internet of things. Um, so, you know, that was one of my biggest fumbles, uh, one of my big fumbles. I mean, the price is still down, right? It's not like it's pumping a lot. It's still down from back here. Right. But, um, helium to me is going to be interesting, um, because I don't really necessarily know what products they have right now. Right. Cause I know that they had the, um, then they have the thing that you could put on your home, the helium miner. I think it was like a bobcat something they had. It's been a while since I looked at helium. So the helium network represents a paradigm shift for decentralized wireless infrastructure. Yeah, I remember they had like the bobcats that they would put on their house, right? Decentralized physical infrastructure networks. Absolutely. So first, let's look at the market cap of what helium is right now. Oh, it's just under a billion dollars. So definitely cause something that can run. Um, let's see what Helium trying to do. It's been a while. Like this probably been like, like three years since I looked at this project. Um, helium. Uh, developer documentation solutions. Connect anything. The Helium Network is the world's largest and fastest growing um, contiguous, contiguous wireless network in history, smart agriculture, smart cities, environmental movement, and logistics supply chain. Okay, da, 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 da. Boom, boom. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, wow, look at this. They have partners. Okay. Free. Discover Helium's rich ecosystem of hardware and software solutions, IoT. Please note for vendors providing tools and services, a listing does not constitute an endorsement. Ugh. 
I have some more information about what exactly do they do. So this is the Bobcat thing. This is the Bobcat thing that I had came across before. Okay. Um, saying that there's a typo. No, oh, well, it doesn't work. I remember before that they had these things that they put on people's houses. Um, hotspot networks. Okay. They got a lot of partners. A lot of partnerships. Looks interesting. A lot of partnerships. So now the question is, what exactly is the Helium token trying to do? So we see who uses Helium case studies. So... When I'm, a, when I'm initially looking at a project, this is the things that I want to see, right? Like, so for example, let me show you this versus a scam project that I'm in. Let me show you exactly why I'm doing this. Like this, this is whether or not it passes the, uh, the scam test or not, right? So this is a scam project that I'm in right now that I got scammed in. I mean, I'm making money in it, but it's a scam. I want you to look at this project, right? Boom. Look at this page. <laughs> Right. I want you to look at look at this right here. Right. Look at the website. Just look at kind of how they got everything laid out. Right. Look at this page versus where are we at? Um, helium. Right. So when you look, whenever you're trying to do some initial research on a project, the first thing you want to come in and do is just look and see like. Look at, they got the partnerships here, right? Just a, a much, much cleaner layout. The pin stands for Decentralized Physical Infrastructure Networks. Boom, 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 boom. Resources build, like hotspots. Provide wireless connectivity and mine Helium tokens. Mining Helium tokens, IoT, Internet of Things, and mobile is done by installing a simple device on your home or office window. That's it. Seriously. Hotspots provide miles of wireless network coverage for millions of devices across two standards. Okay. And you are rewarded in Helium tokens for doing this. So now, how much are the actual devices that you purchase from um, Helium? Because that now we can kind of do like a, a cost comparison. How much does it cost to purchase the devices versus how many Helium tokens are you earning on a daily basis? So do you know where I can go and find out how much the devices cost? Below are the hotspot models that have so far been approved by the Manufacturing Compliance Committee. Okay. Boom. Okay. So look right here. They have it right here. So um, purchase. All right, so um, it's in stock. Country of manufacturer is South Africa. Okay. Hmm. What's the price? Does it say the price? All right, here. I'm assuming that it's basically priced in this. So <laughs> is there any way that we could change the actual currencies? Or oh, let's just convert it into dollars. So... Currency converter, currency converter, currency converter. And then let's go and do um, <laughs> um uh, right, so The South African Rand, right? So, boom. So, let's go do the currency converter. <laughs> Look at you guys got me over here doing some research. I enjoy it, though. I enjoy this. I enjoy this. Um, so, we have 11,000. That's basically oh, only five hundred eighty-six dollars. Not bad. Okay, so it's five hundred eighty-six because this will let you know basic, basically like the same thing with Bitcoin mining, right? Like 
how much does the equipment cost you? And then um, how many years do you have to, or how much, how long do you have to run the actual machines for to actually break even? I'm pretty sure they have like a calculator or something that can kind of do that for you. So it's basically about 500 bucks to purchase it. And then where the hell? Okay, here we go. So it's 11,000 czar, which is basically, it's not bad, $587. Now the question is, where could we go to figure out how much we can earn? Um, So let's go here. Let's look at helium. Helium. Mining. Calculator. All right. Boom. Here we go. All right. Hmm. Looks interesting. I would probably be here for an hour trying to do the research, but this right here says you can earn what one hundred and forty four dollars a day. Again, I would have to really look into the project. But it's interesting. I would I would definitely say to you that this is something that I would definitely do a deep dive on. Um, it's interesting. I, I like the fact that it actually has technology. It's trying to solve a real use case. This is something that would definitely be interesting. This is the last one I'm gonna look into, um, Arc Block. So I would say out of everything we looked at today, this is by far the best one. So if I had to rank them, I would say that this would be number one. The prop base would be number two, and then Arrow Finance would be number three because Arrow Finance to me is just more of the same. That's more liquidity farming, and we know what goes on there. Uh, yeah, I'm looking at it right now, Melvin. Um, Arc Block. This would be the last one. No more donations, guys. So I would say that by far Helium is the best one that I see so far. Now, again, still have to do more research on it. But from what I know, from my experience, um, I like what I see here. Um, arc block, right? Boom. Um, arc. What am I looking for? It's R-A-R-C block. Um, arc block, boom. All right. 186 million coins. Most of the circle, most of the supplies already circulating. That's good to see. Um, market caps, uh, what? 200 million dollars. Um, what sector is it in? It's in AI, big data, good place to be. Interoperability. Um, let's go to the website. Anything about the team? Do, 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 do they have a docs team? No. <laughs> YouTube video on the page. Ah. All right. We want to decentralize applications a part of everyday lives. We want to make decentralized applications part of everyday lives by making it easily accessible and useful. Our mission, we want to make decentralized applications a part of like, like, nah, <laughs> like, like, nah. Can it pump? We got pictures of cats and dogs pumping. When I see this, this reminds me of the scam project I'm in right here. Like, again, um, where is it at? Arbius, right? Like, what is it about? D5 for AI. Model creators, you are first class citizens, set your own fees or none. What does the project do? Right. <laughs> so, but again, I'm up big in the project. I'm up like two, like two, three hundred percent, but I know it's a scam, right? <laughs> like it, it, there's nothing about the project. Peer to peer machine learning, like, right? you know, like we make AI democratic. Okay. Like, so when I look at this, 
you know, not to shoot, not to, you know, shoot down your hopes, but I'm not impressed when I look at the mission. It's like, okay, what do you do? Right. Blockchain technology is changing the world. Implementing blockchain technology. Okay, voiceover, don't like the voiceover, not, not impressed with the voiceover, right? So we don't see no team, no real, no real strong mission, right? So that's, it's not looking good, right? It will hugely impact our society in the future. There are, however, a series of hurdles to cross before it's accepted by mainstream consumers. After years of research and development, we have crossed the hurdles and finally solved the problems. Introducing ArcBlock, the new generation of blockchain 3.0. ArcBlock is designed for the blockchain 3.0 age. We've done more than solve the fundamental problem facing blockchain technology today. We built a brand new infrastructures. ArcBlock provides framework and tools that help consumers. Okay, so now we know who this guy is, Robert Mao. We can look into him, see who he is. Consumers to use a decentralized app, just like today's web and mobile apps. Blocklet is the core foundation for ArcBlock and a high-level application protocol. It combined microservice architecture and serverless computing. Meanwhile, Blocklet can access any external data sources, which links both the computing methods of the upper and lower bound. ArcBlock uses these advantages to carry out smart contract and off-chain business logic, such as database for enterprise, certification for government, stock market, and medical. So basically, they're trying to be like an oracle. <laughs> basically, like what Chainlink does, right? By getting data into the blockchain. Records. ArcBlock's design can be used to connect different blockchain protocols and platform. Chainlink already does that with CCIP. Developers won't get locked in with one platform anymore. The Open Chain Access Protocol provides an abstract layer for accessing underlying blockchains, enabling your application to work on different blockchains. Your applications can be freely switched instead of changing your business logic codes. ArcBlock is born for blockchain 3.0. I believe our platform makes the technology accessible for the people in their everyday life. It's essentially changing the world. ArcBlock is designed to perform in cloud environment, which boosts performance and reduces the cost of blockchain. Our ultimate goal is to create a platform that offers user-friendly blockchain applications more for consumers which in turn enables developers to focus more on the technology. To me, a lot of buzzwords. Chainlink already does a lot of this stuff of cross-chain interoperability because basically some applications are on certain chains and not on other chains or certain data may not be on chain. So getting certain data on chain. So um, it's in the AI space. I think it's going to do well because it's in the AI space. But again, like I said, I'm not really impressed, honestly, at all. I'm not, I'm not impressed. Um, exchange is just on Coinbase Exchange, ABT. So market cap, let's see, had, it's had a monster run. It's up 2,000%. It's had a monster run. It's not bad. Not really impressed. Let's go to the documentation. I would have to, this is something like I said, I would have to dive into a lot of these projects. But just from like looking at the face value of these projects, I'm not really that impressed by this one, honestly. Right. I'm not really impressed, honestly. I, if I had to, I like the Helium project the best, the real estate project the second best. I will go with Arrow Finance the third, and I'll put Arc Block last. Um, so. But again, you ask me these things off the fly, so I'm just kind of giving you just a brief look at these things. All right. I don't when I see stuff like this, I don't it's it's not detailed enough for me. Like when when you come to the helium page, what I like about the helium page is look how detailed it is, right? Like you you can really sit here and you can spend an hour and really just kind of dive into what they're trying to do. Um, for me to really get behind a project, this is what I like to see because now I can spend the weekend 
and really just start diving into like everything. I don't have to go searching for what helium is doing. I can see it here. I don't have to guess what they're doing. I can really take my time out and go figure it out. So for me, I, I'm, I'm more I'm more important than I, I like the information being right here for me to go and find it. So I would say helium by far is number one. Then the real estate number two, Arrow Finance is number three. Because uh, uh, we've been we've seen this already, right? A lot of this yield farming aggregate stuff. Where's the yield coming from, right? If the yield's coming from inflation or giving you tokens as a liquid, nah. So anyway, guys, I've been here for all night. I'm tired. We've been going now for almost two hours. <laughs> uh, please like the video, share the video, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Um, I'm definitely going to look into uh, the helium project. Um, and do a deeper dive into that project because I used to own it anyway. So I'm, I'm interested in what they're trying to do with helium. I think that that would be a really, really good look. But um, that's the best one that I see so far that you guys showed me today. Um, like the video, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Um, text the word YouTube to the number below so you could be notified when I go live uh, via text. Um, it, also follow me on Instagram because I create more content on Instagram than I, than I do create here. Beware of scammers and schemas. I will never DM you first. If you are interested in doing business with me and investing with me, text the word invest to the number below, and then I will send you more information about the investment opportunities that I have to offer. Good night, guys. I am tired.